Hi, I'm Dan Knights. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and the Biotech Institute. I will be your instructor for this course, Discovering Patterns in the Microbiome. I run a computational biology lab here at the University of Minnesota. We do what I call hacking the microbiome. Um, this has a double meaning, so hacking can mean writing computer code. It can also mean exploiting weaknesses in a system to uh, change its behavior for your own benefit, and we're doing both things for the microbiome. Now, this video is going to introduce you to the course and also give a little bit of background on some of the computational challenges involved in studying the microbiome. First, let's talk about the microbiome. This is your gut. The healthy human gut is basically equivalent to a jungle where you have um, many different species competing for many different ecological niches. It's estimated that the typical microbiome uh, may have up to 10 times as many bacterial cells as you have human cells in your body. Of course, the human cells are bigger, that's why you look like a human. Um, there are up to 100 times as many different types of genes in the bacterial, microbiome, uh, uh, bacterial genomes than you have in your human genome, and up to 1,000 different species in a healthy human gut. Um, the, the complexity and the importance for your health um, has led many people to refer to this as your second genome. So um, this is a healthy gut. This is your gut on drugs, specifically antibiotics. And it's basically the equivalent of doing a slash and burn on the healthy rainforest that, uh, that is your gut. And one of the major questions in microbiome medicine is, what does it mean for you when your microbiome looks like this or uh, when it gets into some other unhealthy state? And um, it's, it's kind of scary that we actually do this to our microbiomes all the time. We do this to our kids' microbiomes all the time, and we really don't understand the long-term health consequences. One major consequence is that that gut can lead to this gut, which is, um, which is representative of a uh, bad uh, bacterial infection. So why am I picturing a field of corn? This is meant to represent a monoculture where a single strain has taken over the whole community. And this is actually uh, potentially life-threatening. If you see a patient with this microbiome, that patient is in a very critical condition. This is an easy microbiome to detect. However, there are many other uh, more subtle types of what we call dysbiosis. So dysbiosis just means an imbalance in your gut uh, microbial community. And these different types of dysbiosis have now been linked to virtually every major chronic disease uh, worldwide, including obesity, diabetes, uh, autoimmune disorders like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, malnutrition, HIV, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, certain types of cancer, and the list just keeps growing. Each of these types of dysbiosis is subtly different. Now, um, one major challenge in studying these is that we can't actually grow most of the bugs in the typical human gut microbiome. As soon as you take them out of the human gut, they, became, they become challenging to grow. So what do we do? Well, uh, instead, we grind up their DNA, run it through a DNA sequencer, uh, similar to the ones that are used to sequence human genomes, and then we get back something that looks like this. So this is your gut on my laptop. And um, this is basically how we analyze the data. We take all the bacterial genes, line them up, and then we look for columns that are, um, have subtle variations in them to figure out which species each DNA sequence came from or uh, which gene it's from. Then we can start to, to determine which bugs are associated with each disease and what they might be doing. One uh, benefit of, of doing microbiome research today is that we can get a lot of data. The cost of sequencing has been going down exponentially every year. But this also represents another challenge, which is that we, we basically are standing in the shadow of this tidal wave of data. And uh, we are the scientists trying to figure out how best to use the data for, um, for statistical analysis. Now I'm going to discuss a few broad computational challenges inherent in analyzing microbiomes that we will be breaking down into their various components throughout the course. 
The first one is making sense from the raw sequence data. And the main questions we'll be asking here are, given a large data file of DNA sequences from a microbiome, what species are there? What genes do they have? What functions uh, might they have? The next challenge is taking the output from that, where we know what species are there, or we know what genes they have, and figuring out what is a healthy microbiome. Um, and for the most part, I'll be discussing clinical applications in this course, but you can also think of healthy in terms of uh, other ecosystems, like what's healthy in the ocean, what's healthy in soil. Now, this turns out to be quite challenging because microbiomes can be very different from person to person. Here is a depiction of this concept. This is a picture of over a thousand different microbiomes from different healthy people. And it was basically every published microbiome that my collaborators and I could get our hands on back in 2012. What you see here is a plot where um, microbiomes that are similar to each other are close to each other, and microbiomes that are different are far apart from each other. And then we've colored them according to this one dominant genus called Bacteroides. So, okay, so what do these colors mean? The red um, subjects at the left end of the plot are, um, they are subjects who have almost 100% of this one genus. The blue subjects at the other end have almost none. Now, um, the, the analysis just got more complicated because these are all healthy people. So it's not something like a blood glucose level or uh, HDL, LDL, uh, cholesterol ratio in your blood where we can pick a threshold um, for determining who's healthy. Because you can have people that are healthy who have completely different sets of bugs in them. And it's not also as simple as looking at this single uh, genus, Bacteroides, because we colored the same plot by a bunch of other different dominant bugs, and we see that there are all these different um, intersecting gradients of them, some of them going this way, some of them going that way, some of them are actually kind of coming out of the page at you in the third dimension, and actually this continues on for many more dimensions. So what we found is that your microbiome at any point in time is a single point in this complex, uh, multi-dimensional, continuous distribution. Now I said at any point in time, because there's another uh, wrinkle here, which is if you study one person over time, you find that that person's microbiome is actually bouncing around inside um, their own mini microbiome cloud. And that cloud hopefully is somewhere inside the larger cloud of all healthy subjects. So these are uh, some challenges that we'll be learning how to address throughout the course. Another major challenge is doing biomarker discovery. And this is something we would do when we want to tell not just whether someone is healthy, but um, whether they have a particular type of dysbiosis or a particular type of disease. And in this case, we'll be looking for what I would call a microbial fingerprint for the disease that distinguishes it from a healthy subject or from a different, a person with a different disease. And the features here could be um, species, they could be genera, families, bacterial phyla, they could be uh, bacterial genes or bacterial functional pathways. To do this analysis, there are actually many different steps, um, all of which are computational. And I've listed the ones that we're going to be discussing in this course on this slide. So there's a lot of content. Um, we won't be assuming that you have any background in programming. So there'll be a lot of example uh, code for you to use. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these right now, but you can take a look at them. And, uh, and the, each of these is going to be broken down into a couple of uh, explanational videos.